Hi, we're in Siam Reap, Cambodia. We're about to head to the capital in Phnom Penh and we're going to meet a ethical factory called Fair So. They're doing some really great work. It's run by two women called Angelis and Justine and they've been kind enough to invite us to see what they're all about. We're really interested to see them and we think you will be too. Thank you so much for letting us come and see your beautiful factory. Yeah, we're really interested to know okay, your story, how this came about. Okay, um, so I came here about more than 10 years ago and um, I really wanted to start my own right away label and so um, I actually started that up. I had one staff member come work with me. I worked for my house. So that kind of grew up, but as as I got a little bit bigger with that and employed like a second staff member, what we found was we were getting more inquiries for, can you do this small run of production? Can you make 20 of these t-shirts? Can you make 10 of these bags? And that's kind of how we got started um, and eventually became fair so. So I'm interested if you had someone uh, who came and approached you and said they want to start making there, uh, what would be the process, like how long would it take from start to finish to having a product? It depends a little bit on the product, but for most things people will come to us and say, you know, show us like a sketch or a photo, or maybe even a sample and say this is what I would make. And if we look at it and know that we have the skills to do it, then we do quotations and stuff. And that process can take a few weeks to a couple of months depending on how much information we need to exchange. Once we get samples and everything sorted, patterns, grading, all of that kind of settled, then you know when they're going to place a production order. Um, if it's just a small order it might only take a couple of weeks, if it's a larger order it might take a month, month and a half. Because we're small we can move pretty quickly. That's, I'm kind of surprised, like that's a lot faster than I was expecting, you know. What's your key values here at Festo? I guess our most important is being transparent. So transparent with the customers, with the staff. You know, why why do we have to have the factories? You know, terrible, dirty conditions and people are not happy. And so you know, why why does it have to be like that? Yeah, there's not really any reason to me. When we go around and we talk to the staff about like you know what what impact just having this kind of job had for you and I think for a lot of them it's like, yeah, we, you know, they're saving money, yeah. they're sending money home, they're able to, um, you know, a lot of them have bought new motorbikes, they send their kids to school, yeah. um, they have money to pay their rent on time um, and pay their bills on time, which has been a huge yeah. thing, like having steady salary, I think it makes it a much more attractive job you know, yeah. to for my ultimate goal with the business will be to have um, a full local management, full local staff, full local management as well, to the point where I can kind of be on a board that supports what we do, yeah. that I can kind of back off a little bit and go, okay, well, this is the this is the model. It's a big, big vision. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, you've got to you've got to have that big vision to yeah. kind of get there. But, we're getting closer now to being able to scale just that little bit extra to make it a nice and sustainable unit. And we're only looking at scaling this up to maybe I don't know, 30, 35, maybe 40 people as a, as a sort of a total unit. And we sort of we wouldn't necessarily go much bigger than that. It sounds like you're doing a really good job here. Like, it's pretty inspirational, you know? So I want to know what brought you here to Cambodia. Uh, What's your story behind finding Festo and now you've been here for a year? Yeah, uh, it's crazy. I started learning about um, the issues in the industry when I was uh, doing my degree at university, uh, QUT. And 
we did the subject of sustainability and so we learned a lot about sweatshops um, and a lot of environmental issues and hands down I was just like okay well that's what I'm doing in my life so I think it's really important for the consumer to make it, e make it easy for the consumer to find out who made their clothes yeah. right and so that's kind of a, a major point that we're doing at Verso is trying to connect with the consumer a little bit easier yeah. even though we don't have a direct relationship with them it's true that the clothes that we made in this facility ends up being bought and worn by a consumer is that same for a brand yeah. that they may uh, make with Verso is automatically giving that idea that they are an ethical brand. That's really good because I think a lot of factories uh, do the opposite they try and be really in the background yeah. without anyone to know mm -hmm. Uh, about them and mm -hmm. that's why people have become disassociated with mm -hmm. how clothes are made you know mm -hmm. people don't understand it anymore actually how clothes even are yeah. brought into being yeah so. so many people still think that like machines are doing it or like yeah they don't realize that people, yeah yeah like i mean i know there's a lot of technology advancements but i mean like, people are behind our clothes yeah you know? there's people there yeah you can see the people here like their hands are touching your clothes yeah. you know Thousands of hands will touch your clothes before you buy them yeah, and then wear exactly. them. What we've really taken on board is certainly trying to understand like what do consumers want, so therefore what do brands want and trying to deliver that. Uh, there's a little lot pushing on consumers to buy ethically and for brands to uh, manufacture ethically and we want to be there being like, hey, like consumers, you can buy from these brands that work with Verso yeah. and hey brands, you can come talk to us, this is all what we do. Are you kind of one of the main people here in Cambodia doing things like this? Uh, so there's a lot of uh, NGO uh, sort of sewing workshops and things like that. Uh, Verso is a for-profit business. Um, we just take on ethical values, so we're a social enterprise in that way. Uh, but you know, giving someone there, providing human rights, is not a charitable thing to do. It's actually just a very humanist humanistic thing to do, right? Yeah. So that's just that's our idea. Is we want to we want to show people that you can make ethically. It can be a beautiful garment. It can be fashion forward. It can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. And just paying people properly making sure that they you know don't go home starving or that they can support their families back home like it's very basic stuff we're so trying to change uh the fashion industry as a whole you're trying to just change small people's lives you yeah. know and do what you can in these mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and make people realize like it's not a radical thing yeah so i mean that's that's our idea it's just like we just want to create fashion with that having human harm and yeah. apparently that's you know a radical thing to do you know but we don't want it to be radical it's not a niche part of the of any industry to have human rights upheld so um, why should it be in the fashion industry have you seen a change since you started to now uh, about how consumers are opening up to the idea of the ethical fashion i think so certainly like when i've had friends come up to me and tell me that they they won't buy from various fast fashion um, stores or have my like cranky dad tell me that he's not going to buy from Target anymore Yay. because of what I say. I'm just like, okay, and where fashion is just based on convenience, uh, if I can get people like that to change their mind, like that's one of the most like amazing things for me truly. It's those fast fashion and when you're talking about like Kmart, BW or um, Target. They're the ones that kind of brought them. in the race to the bottom pricing structures yeah. a lot of the time mm -hmm. that kind of ruined what people think of fashion. So mm. they now assume that fashion should also be cheap as yeah. well as good quality and as yeah. well as fashionable. Yeah. And actually like one of those things is always going to suffer. You know, mm -hmm. the quality is the main thing to probably suffer. You know, we have our clients send us our photo shoots, um, their photo shoots, so happy yeah. their photo shoots. And um, yeah, that's really exciting because awesome. we share that with the staff. We're just like, we yeah. made this yeah. Yeah. and it's on this like, beautiful model, very professional sort of photo shoot. Yeah. And to like show the staff what they've made yeah. and that it's, you know, this incredible garment that's yeah. sold in the US or something. Yeah, because a lot of yeah. the factory workers will never see the product of what they actually yeah. make, you know, they just on to the next thing. It's really rewarding mm -hmm. for someone who makes something to be able to see yeah. the end product. So is there a team member we can meet and chat to one of the girls who works here? Um, 
Yeah, it'd be really good to talk to uh, Sapeet. So she's been with us for ages and uh, she's the technical lead up here. So um, she trains all the girls uh, in the um, workshop and then she also does our PC in my and our as well. Wow. I think she's in this other store, right? Okay, great. Hey. ยังเพื่อการเลยวินิจคอมเพนเซอร์วินิจเวลาเอ่อกระไรจังเซย์กระไรที่ตัวนี้ตีมวยคือกระไรนี่คืออ่าเดี๋ยวเพื่อการติด